What's going on, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Fandoms Anonymous. But this isn't another. This, of course, is an episode of Fandoms Anonymous. But this is the very first episode of GT's Random Rants with my man, GT. What's going on, GT? What's up, bro? GT is going to be coming to us with some things that are on his mind, some things that grinds his gears. <laughs> it's one of the first things that he's going to be talking about is, are movies becoming unoriginal? Take it away, man. All right, y'all. <clears throat> now, one one video, last video that we did, I was talking about, you know, like, um, we were talking about how, like, trailers reveal a lot. And I did drop an inkling of how I was going to, you know, rip apart a lot of these movies. And how my man Malcolm here ripped apart Transformers the last night. Woo. And he was well within his rights of doing that. Yeah. He was well within his rights of doing that. And I was like, this can't be life. It's Transformers. I grew up watching it. Then, lo and behold, I sat through three hours of this, and I was like, Michael Bay needs to be jumped. <laughs> something. I mean, something. But I'm going to get on to it, man. Do I feel movies are becoming unoriginal? Yes, they are. Because set aside from, like, the typecast of certain actors and actresses, you know, that play the same role over and over again. Like, say, for example, um, let me use Steven Seagal as an example. Anytime you watch a Steven Seagal movie, Steven Seagal is always playing practically the same character in every right. movie. He's always playing, he's always playing that guy that, you know, I can break your arms, I have a ponytail, and, you know, I can sit over there and do all this and I don't get hit because if you hit me, then I'm going to walk out from the movie, blah, 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 blah. He's always playing like some assassin, some cop, some, somebody that just cannot be touched, you know, and it's like, show us some depth, show us that you're human, show us that you have feelings, show us that, you know, can Steven Seagal cry? <laughs> Something, you know? But, um, but movies being so unoriginal is just sad because, you know, nowadays, one thing that's missing from a lot of movies, in my opinion, is character development. Now, as I said a couple of videos ago, you know, I can go back to like way in the 80s and no, I'm, I'm a, I was born in 78. I'm not afraid to admit my age, okay? But growing up in the 80s and the 90s, you know, when you look at the special effects of movies back then, they're cheesy to, come to today's standards. But when you look back at those films and look at the films now, those films were original in content, in texture. Practical effects. And, and practical effects. You didn't need a billion dollar budget to tell a story. You needed character development. It was the characters that brought you into it. Like, when I watched the first two Ghostbusters movies, I mean, the special effects, okay, cheesy compared to today. But when you look at the four main characters of, you know, you just look at the characters, you know, like like Dr. Peter Vickman and, you know, Ray and Egon and Winston, you know, lost my thoughts there for a minute. Their character drug you into the storyline mm -hmm. and it actually made you care. Exactly. Versus... Well, we got explosions, we have ghosts and monsters and boogeymen and all this other stuff here. And then, but then when you watch it on camera now, you're like, that doesn't look scary. Doesn't look scary at all. Now, how would you, now that you're on Ghostbusters, how would you compare the new Ghostbusters to the old one? Because uh, I watched the old one growing up. It used to, when they used to run the reruns on the weekends, mm -hmm. that stuff was a little scary at a young age. It was like, yeah, wait a minute, yeah, you know, those yeah, practical yeah. effects? Not yeah. everything is just... Click. Click, insert monster here. <laughs> exactly, here, insert monster here. Um, we're gonna look at the DVD extras. Insert claws here. I'm like, it's not doing nothing for me. <laughs> okay, but uh, to answer your question, though, Malcolm. Um, yeah, as a child, you were scared. You know, watch because, like you said, practical effects scared you. But you know, but that's the thing. If it still resonates to you today as an adult, it still stays in there. Like, wow, even you know, even when you watch. Some of the older Disney movies, like Fantasia, for example. Mm -hmm. Hey, I still have nightmares, and I'm almost a 40-year-old man, and I still have nightmares watching Fantasia. Like, they actually show this in a Disney cartoon when I was a kid. Yeah. Just, I'm like, and I'm a grown man. I'm like, I'm seeing, like, Mickey Mouse making a cauldron and some stuff. You see the devil and all kinds of monsters running up a mountain, kicking babies and Nephilim's off mountains. I'm like, that is still that creepy. They creepy. Got, that's still creepy. But, the, but unoriginality... I mean, it seems like formulas are being rehashed over and over again in movies, especially when these films go into franchises. Uh, for example, I just saw the last um, 
alien film, Alien Covenant, and I'm glad I didn't go watch it in theaters. 1979's tagline for the first Alien film went, In space, no one can hear you scream. And that was just a scary claustrophobic feeling seeing Sigourney Weaver running from this alien and she didn't know where it was. Mm -hmm. Nobody knew. Nowadays with special effects and the fact that, you know, these, these, these studios want to do origin stories, I don't want to even see an origin story because when I saw Covenant, I said they should just stay with the original content of a extraterrestrial predator out there that's highly aggressive killing people versus, oh, this is how it was made. Okay, now that takes away from the whole terror and fear effect. Exactly. It takes away from the whole terror and fear effect, especially when I'm paying money to see aliens kill people, but I'm seeing humans talking throughout the whole film. Right. That's what made me mad about Transformers. Whew. If I see Optimus Prime on this poster, oh, he had to hide his face. If I see Optimus Prime on this poster, I want to see Optimus Prime by himself drop Decepticon bodies. I don't want to see Shia LaBeouf help Optimus Prime. I don't want to see Mark Wahlberg help Optimus Prime. No. I don't want to see any other Transformers help Optimus Prime. No. Optimus don't need help. He's no. Optimus freaking Prime. For an example, keyword, Prime. Well, Original. Well, Optimus first, well, when he finally came into the movie, it was just one scene, which was the best scene of that entire movie. Optimus came through these these Decepticons that had split apart, came at him. Mm -hmm. Optimus said, do you know who I am? That and then was it. And through him. You know what I'm that saying? Was that was it. it. But other than that, it's like Optimus needs help to fight. It, like me, I grew up watching the original series, the animated series, and even um, in, you know what I'm saying, like in the comic books. Optimus didn't need help because he, there was a reason why he was chosen to be the leader of the Autobots for a reason, okay? Mm -hmm. But what what would you say are some other grief. things that show us that movies are becoming unoriginal? Um, lack of star power. What I mean by lack of star power, lack of believability that you're not just playing a character that you are that character. Right. You know, for example, if you watch one of my favorite movies, Gladiator, and also one of the most manliest movies ever made too. One of the most fantastic movies ever made, okay? <laughs> man you like that word? Yeah, you like that word, fantastic. <laughs> fantastic <laughs> theater. <laughs> but um, Russell Crowe didn't play Maximus. Russell Crowe was Maximus. So if I was to see Russell Crowe walk down the street, I'm not seeing Russell Crowe. I'm seeing Maximus from Gladiator. I don't care how many pounds he put on. I'm like, this dude could really kick my butt right now. I feel the same way about Leon. <laughs> Whenever I see Leon, I see David Ruffin. I don't see yeah, Leon. Yeah, exactly. It, yeah, it's star <laughs> power. You know, it, 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 an originality also goes into market, you know, um, how can I say the word? Marketability, making marketability. somebody, marketability, making someone marketable, marketable, yeah. Versus you just choose somebody to play a character because he or she is just that flavor of the month and they on Vanity Fair magazine just because they look good. I mean, exactly. you can get a car that looks good and got, you know, got some D's on it like, you know, Rich Boy from your hometown in Mobile, okay? I'm just saying, throw some D's on it. D's but, on it. But, what made you get that car other than the paint job and the and the rims and all the other good jazz? I mean, you got to look at the mileage put on it, the time, the time, you know, time into, you know, uh, uh, the maintenance put in the vehicle, the time that you're, you know, putting into it. And that's where a lot of these films are failing. It's like, it's kind of like when you go to drive through at McDonald's and you see the Big Mac on the billboard. You're like, man, I want that Big Mac. It's all nice and pretty with the bread and yeah. everything, you know, whatever. And, you know, the fries got steam coming out of it. You know, the soda got the ice and it's all crystal and stuff. And when you go to the drive-thru and you get your meal. Here you go. Here you go. The sandwich is smashed up. <laughs> you got everything falling over the place. Your fries are soggy and cold. They ain't got no salt on them. Probably got pepper on them with sugar, depending on who working there. My mom. And your, <laughs> drink, and your drink is flat. And the point I'm making with that is, is that, you know, you know, you know, when you look at stuff, you want to look at the original taste and content or texture of it. You know, you know, but when these movies come out, it's like well, we just put it out just to make money. Well, it's you know, I gotta say, a lot of films, a lot of directors too. You all, I challenge y'all to make these movies better and stop milking these series and just know where the cutoff point is. That's okay. all I gotta say. Man, this has been an amazing first episode of GT's Random Rants. Continue to watch this series. <laughs> <laughs>
Because there's gonna be more coming. It's gonna be I'm more com- coming. I'm, I'm coming for a lot of y'all that, that, that make me <laughs> mad when, when you don't when you don't when, when my nerve senses are tingling. I'm gonna I'm coming for you. We're gonna have more episodes of GT Random Rants coming up to the Families Anonymous YouTube channel. Please stay tuned. You know who we are. We're Families Anonymous. Have a good one.